Cynthia, what does a cutter do? A cutter is responsible for taking a designer's sketch and turning it into a wearable garment for the stage. It's entirely in the hands of the cutter how the designer's vision is realized. A cutter has to make a pattern from the design. Meaning draft a pattern? Draft a pattern or drape a pattern, use various techniques that we have for arriving at a pattern, and uh, cutting it, um, overseeing the, the construction. We usually have a team of sewers working for us. Um, could be three, four, five, six people, depending on the, the, the bulk of the work that you have. You oversee the construction of that. You do the fittings, and you see the, um, the trim, all the, the extra um, additions to the costume, right through to the final garment that is worn on the stage. So it's a huge responsibility. And what's the trickiest part of that process, going from a two-dimensional sketch to a three-dimensional costume? Trickiest? Um, Where the most art is involved. Susan Benson used the word interpret. She said yes. such, she would let some cutters, she would just give them the sketch yes. and let them interpret the sketch. Yes. And other cutters, she felt that she had to be a little more involved. Yes. Depending on how much uh, Well, a lot of it... And Susan was always great with me that way. She'd just give me the sketch and let me go to it. Um, you have to have a knowledge of, of, um, of art history, costume history. Um, if you're in period, if you're doing a period costume, you need, you need a great deal of, of reference, um, either to look up at that point and, and um, read about, read about the, the period that you're going to do, um, and uh, that's where you have to start. You have to, you have to have the knowledge about the period that you're, that you're doing. So if, say if you're working on an 18th century piece, say yes. The Country Wife, Yes. Um, how do you find your way into that period? So when you cut the design? Uh, well, you, you have costume books. We all have a library of costume books that we go to to see what um, what they actually did. Sometimes you have to adapt um, adapt techniques that they actually used at the time to make it work for a modern body. And, um, but the silhouette of, of certainly a period garment is the most important thing to achieve because regardless of what the designer has, has chosen for trim or um, the fabrics used, if you haven't achieved the silhouette, you have not achieved the period. And you virtually mean the outline? The, actually, the outline, yes. So if it's a man's jacket or a man's coat in the 18th century, it is the cut of the... It is the cut, yes. Shoulders, where the, waist. Where the seams come, those seams in the back, that and they flare out, that says that period. It it's, doesn't exist any, at any other time except that period. And are, uh, do you have a favorite period? Because there's so many periods in which Shakespearean plays take place. Yes. In, you know, from Roman times to pre-Roman times yes. to Well, ancient the 18th Britain. century is always, cutters are always fond of the 18th century, yes, because it is wonderful. And especially if you're doing women's clothes, um, they're wonderful bodices to do at that time. And that's, that's very satisfying um, for a cutter to achieve a, a beautiful period bodice. It's one of the, one of the things we, we aim for. Now you used the term a modern body, cutting a period costume for a modern body. Yes. What's a modern body? Well, people are bigger. They're much bigger. They're broader, broader shoulders. Um, and uh, I mean, you'd be amazed at the size of, of some of the, the actual, well, I don't know if you've seen costumes clothes and clothing from the past in museums, um, they're often very, very tiny. And um, you, Do you mean tiny in, in, in our proportions just shrunk down a bit? Yes. Or do you mean just, actually 
Well, I mean, women used to aspire to having 16-inch waistlines and things like that. I mean, that's totally, with a corset, of course, they'd pull. That's totally unrealistic today. Nobody, nobody can even get there. Is that it's, 16 it's, inch? About, it's about like that. Nobody, nobody can achieve that. It's, it's just, it's not in our, I mean, people are healthier and they, they don't aspire to. Even thin people can't get to have a 16-inch waistline. It's absurd. And, you know, I, the smallest waist in a woman that I've ever come across in my career was 20. And that is very, very small. And how tall was that woman with a 20-inch oh, waist? Oh, maybe 5 foot 2 or 3. And um, so even, even ballet dancers who are, who are pretty small on the, on the whole, I think 20 inches is the smallest I ever, I ever came across. So I did a lot of ballet work in my early my early career. So how do you um, cut a period silhouette for a modern body that doesn't fit, that doesn't look like that? Well, you just, you have to adapt that. It's, it's in your pattern, when you're making your pattern, you have to, to make the pattern fit the measurements that you have for the, for the body that you're doing, of course. Can you give me an example? Well... In terms of shoulders or waists or hips or... Well, it's just all it has to be expanded. And, um, one of the one of the difficulties with with um, period, say the 18th century period, is that the the shoulders need to be very narrow f for the look, and it's often very hard to achieve that because people generally have have bigger shoulders, muscular. I mean, people are people work out these days. Actors work out, and, and you get muscles and things that you have to <laughs> you have to cope with. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of adapting has to go on. I must say, when I, when I see a film and I see a, you know, a 21st century actor you know, in an 18th century costume, uh, and they look big and muscular, it just looks it off balance. It doesn't look looks right. No, I know. Something it's, wrong. And I yep. don't, is that because we're, we've conditioned by the paintings and yes. of what to expect? That's right. That is absolutely the thing. It, it looks wrong when you have big, big shoulders and big muscles. Because those shoulders were very small, sloping shoulders, narrow. So how could narrow. you help uh, an actor who has big shoulders make him appear as if he's got small shoulders? Well, you move scenes around so that they it, it appears. Um, it's hard to to actually describe that, but as as a you know you you, it's one of the things you do at a fitting. You think, oh gosh, I've got to I've got to move that seam over and and. Um, you're talking of the seam. Yes, the, shol kind of seam. the shoulder seam. Yes, I got to move it in, but that's tricky because then you can't raise your arms if it's not in a certain certain place. It's it's just it's one of the difficulties of of doing period clothes on modern bodies. It's it's constantly, but you you know you get used to uh, knowing what to do. Right. Um, but it's it's constant with a cutter. You have to always think in those terms. You said the 18th century, most cutters like the 18th yes. century because of the yes, proportions? Yes, and it's, um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful period. The, the um, Edwardian period is another one that's, that's, um, that I'm very fond of doing. It's very elegant. And um, how, is that, how is the Edwardian period silhouette different than the 18th century? Well, it's, um, it's still corseted for women, um, but it's... Uh, it's, it doesn't have any structure around the hips. The, the 18th century always had, uh, always had um, you know, panniers or, or um, a roll around the waist to hold, to hold and the skirt panier, up. And a pannier is? is the, the, well, it comes from the basket, the French baskets, you know, that are on, on each hip. And it holds the skirts out to the side. No, me as a, a, a as an ordinary person, think, why would I be more attracted to a woman who had baskets hanging on her hips, over which her dress went? Well, you, it's uh, y you would have if you lived in the time. What was it I about mean, the basket, uh, hip, large hips that were made the woman attractive? Do you know? I I mean I don't know. I can't I can't say that as a person from that century. But 
the evolution of costume is, is quite interesting because you know the one of the, the ugliest, it's far uglier than the panniers, is the Elizabethan time when they had a, a wheel farthingale, which was a complete circle that went around, that held the skirt out all the way around below the waist. And that is really one of the, it's one of the, the most structured of all periods, the Elizabethan, and is uh, very, it's very time consuming to do, very labor intensive.